One day, I am 19 years old, I am out of my mind, and I'm walking past a wall, and on this wall there's a poster, and it is advertising a martial arts tournament. A one-day, winner-takes-all, no-holds-barred martial arts tournament, like UFC-style death tournament, okay? I was like, that's me right there. Yeah, I'm gonna enter into the tournament. I will win, I guess, on account of my tenacity. <laughs> it's what I was thinking. And I was like, everyone's gonna respect me now. They're gonna know I'm the realist. This is awesome. This is my ticket right here to respect. Now, many of you heard that and you're like, that's a terrible plan. If you fight people who actually know how to fight, they're going to punch your head off. <laughs> and you would be correct. But it's worse than that. Because I did not sign up for a one day UFC style death tournament. I accidentally, without realizing it, signed up for a one day point scoring karate tournament. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what that is, it is not no holds barred. It is all holds barred, okay? <laughs> point scoring karate is not so much fighting as a celebration of karate, okay? Most of the rule sets don't allow you to actually punch each other. You tap each other for points. The referee resets you. Everyone has a good time. Karate's fun, okay? It is not no holds barred. You, most people don't even uh, punch. It's crazy, okay? So I have signed up thinking it's a death tournament, but it is point scoring karate. I go and tell my gang member friends, yo, I signed up for a one day UFC style tournament. Are you guys gonna come support me? And they're like, yes, we will be there. That sounds amazing. We will all be there. One of my friends is like, what division are you gonna fight in? And I was like, they break up these divisions by belt. I'm gonna fight in black belt. He's like, yo, that's crazy, because you don't have a black belt. And I was like, it's not a problem. And it wasn't. <laughs> you can just buy a black belt. They're like, $40, it's incredibly reasonable. We could all be black belts tonight, okay? No one stops you. No one asks you any questions. There's no written test. The guy who sells it to you doesn't even do one of these to see if you do karate back at him. He does it, you're like, he's like, that was pretty fast. You can have it. I'm watching you though. No, none of that happens. I went to a store, I bought a black belt, and the guy who sold it to me upsold me a pair of nunchucks, okay? <laughs> that I was later arrested for using. <laughs> now that's a fun sentence to say. I bought a black belt and I was sold nunchucks. But if you stop and think about what's happening in that situation, it's so much more insane than you think. Because here's what's happening. It is the year 2005. I have face tattoos in 2005. That's crazy, okay? Tattoos were not popular back then, all right? To have face tattoos was like, that's a gang member, okay? I walk up, buy a black belt, they like put it on the thing. He looks at me right in my stupid tattooed face, okay? <laughs> Sees me a gang member buying a black belt I did not earn, obviously. <laughs> and he thinks to himself, I'm gonna sell this guy nunchucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just like, is it morally right to do this? No. Am I gonna make the sale and get those shoes I've been thinking about? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? He literally was like, hey, do you want nunchucks? And I was like, that's allowed? Chuck me up, let's go. He goes, do you want metal or wood? I was like, you know what I want. He sold me nunchucks that I was arrested for using in a bar fight. That's right. Sounds tough if you don't think about it. If you think about it for any amount of time, it sucks. It sucks a lot because the implication of that is that I was in my 20s going to bars with nunchucks, okay? 
fucking stupid. I knocked a guy out full on. Bop, he went to sleep. Sounds tough, but then you have to stop and think about it, really. Because what that implies is that my brother and all my tough biker friends start a like wild west bar brawl and they're all fighting like men and then here comes Shane with nunchucks just like I'm in the matrix <laughs> and you better believe I didn't know how to use them okay oh I, re I watched zero YouTube tutorials okay the fight started and I was like wait for me guys trying to get him out of my pants <laughs> oh I got it I got it I just hurt my hip immediately the second I... Oh! How do they do this? I hit a guy so hard that they do work. They do work, though. Woo! Just knocked him out. Cold. I was arrested immediately. So fast. I got arrested so fast, it felt like they were, cops were already in the bar. Like they were waiting for me. Like it was a kung fu sting or something. <laughs> they were just in the bar, just like, yeah, Roger. Yeah, it is nunchucks. No, Roger, those are nunchucks, move in. I, I thought in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna hit everybody with these nunchucks. I'm gonna hit so many people. I hit one guy, I hit zero more people. So I hit him, I was immediately arrested, and this is why I will never forget this night for the rest of my life, okay? I get arrested super fast. Now, hands behind my back, in handcuffs. The cop is leading me out of the bar under arrest. One hand on the back of my neck, the other hand gripping the chain of the handcuffs and he is pushing me out of the bar. And as he's doing it, he says to the back of my head, he goes, Michelangelo is my favorite. <laughs> I was just like, am I still in trouble? Oh yeah, you're super arrested right now. Like you're, it's crazy how hard you're going to jail, dude. I was like, I just had to ask, you know. <laughs> Dude, I would love, I've always, I've told this story on the road a whole bunch, and, and more than anything, I love imagining a guy in the audience hearing the story and being like, hold on. <laughs> Sounds like the time I got hit with nunchucks. <laughs> just leaves the showroom, goes into the lobby with his phone, calls his friend, his friend answers, he goes, shut up, shut up right now. Do you remember in 2005 when I got knocked out in that fight and everyone made fun of me because I said I got hit with nunchucks? And all of you guys were like, no one brings nunchucks to the bar. You got knocked out regular. Well, he's here right now. No, I don't know if he has nunchucks on him. So, oh man. So I have a black belt now, right? And I'm ready for the fight. So here's what happens. So I have my black belt, but the fight isn't for several days. I signed up and you know, I have to wait for the tournament. Now, I don't know if you guys can know by just looking at me, but I'm not a big consequences guy, okay? <laughs> I don't think about them. Consequences, those are future Shane's problems, okay? <laughs> that guy hates us. <laughs> But we don't care what he thinks, do we? We're out here living. So I signed up for this tournament and I do begin to develop anxiety. I'm not used to waiting for a fight. Now don't forget, I do believe I've signed up for a one day UFC style tournament. And I'm freaking out because I'm like, okay, well, I have confidence in myself, but these guys are like the best guys. They're black belts. Those are the best fighters, right? Now I'm like, what if they knock me out? What if they beat me up? What if they humiliate me in front of my friends? I'm, I'm going crazy. I have all this anxiety. I can't sleep. I'm obsessing. The day of the fights come and I'm so nervous. I'm so racked with anxiety that I am not perceiving the world around me as I walk into a high school gymnasium, okay? <laughs> surrounded by children, all right? 
It is like noon on Saturday. This is not the time for a UFC style death tournament. But that's not occurring to me, okay? I'm literally in a gym, like in a basketball court with the wrestling mats laid out, okay? There's people all over. In my mind, I'm so nervous that I'm just like, yeah, kids fight to the death too. <laughs> Karate's crazy like that. I'm losing it, man. I'm so nervous. I send my gang member friends into the bleachers with the moms. Mm -hmm. And I sign in. I'm completely focused. Just looking at the mat. You can do this, Shane. You can do this, Shane. I'm, I'm freaking out. They announce the first pairing over the loudspeaker. They're just like, first up in the black belt division, we've got Shane Smith versus Sensei Dan. It's like, <gasps> the Sensei. <laughs> Right? That's the best guy. I was like, why am I fighting the final boss? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> you don't do that first. I should fight three progressively bigger guys, and every time I beat them, I get some fruit, and that makes me healthier. <laughs> or something. To fight the best guy. Because in my mind, the sensei is the best guy, right? He's the sensei. What I am not realizing at the time is that every guy in this tournament is a sensei. They all own karate schools. All these children are their students. Why else would an adult be here? <laughs> but I don't know that. I'm like, Dan's the sensei. He's the guy. This place is so casual and everyone's having so much fun with each other, they didn't even call him by his last name. They called him Sensei Dan. That doesn't occur to me. I'm just like, well, Dan's the ultimate warrior. <laughs> I walk into the circle to get ready for the fight. All right, I'm here, the referee's here. Dan comes out and I see him for the first time. Now, I can only describe Dan as like, have you guys ever seen Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc.? You know that guy? <laughs> All right. Now, I would never body shame someone, okay? Truly from the bottom of my heart, if you are living your life and you're happy and killing it, I'm happy and proud for you. You keep doing that. But let's all be real with each other. Some bodies are not karate bodies, okay? Dan did not exactly have a body for karate, okay? But that's not what I thought when I saw him. I was so amped up and so nervous that as soon as I saw him, my first thought was, well, that's what the ultimate warrior looks like. <laughs> Crazy, all his muscle is in the middle of him like that. <laughs> We've seen this before. It's a, he could probably deadlift 800 pounds. That's a power belly. That's what that is. Dan walks up to me, and we are facing off for the fight. Dan is wearing eyeglasses for the fight. Now, in point scoring karate, you can't punch someone in the face. So he's safe to wear glasses. But I don't know that. I see my man wearing eyeglasses for a fist fight, and I'm just like, wow, you don't think I can hit you in the face. You're so confident that you're gonna matrix pass all my punches. You wore glasses for the fight? Another level of confidence. It makes me nervous immediately. I'm just like, this guy thinks he's gonna knock me out before I can touch his glasses? This is crazy. I'm losing my mind. The referee's like, are you ready? Yeah, are you ready? Yeah. And he's about to tell us to fight. Dan and I are existing in two separate realities <laughs> simultaneously, okay? Dan is here smiling away at the point scoring karate tournament <laughs> to have fun with his friends and family. I am at the Mortal Kombat tournament <laughs> fighting for my life. <laughs> So the referee says, fight. And dude, before his hand is even all the way down, I am attacking Dan like a wild animal. <laughs> right? Because how do you beat the best guy? You gotta go right at him. I can't fight.
fight him on his terms. That's crazy. He's a master. So my plan is this. I go, well, Dan's the best guy. He's a karate master. He's the sensei. So I'm going to throw like nine strikes in a row at him, and he will casually block all of them. But maybe one gets through. And that is my ticket to victory. I'm going to overwhelm him. I'm going to surprise him with my confidence and aggression. So that's what I do, dude. The ref's hand is even all the way down, and I am attacking him like a maniac. The first strike I throw at Dan, big kick. Dan does not block it. And, in fact, chooses to absorb all of it into his stomach. And then he takes a step back, doubles over, and made a sound I've never heard since. He sounded like a whale got the wind knocked out of it. He just went, ooh, ooh. And then from this position, he chose to lay on the ground. So I'm standing there just like, caught Sensei Dan slipping. Nice, right? Got him. And I'm looking at him on the ground, and the ref walks up, and the ref goes, don't look at him, turn around. And I was like, what is happening? He goes, turn around, don't look at him. And I was like, I don't know what's happening. And he goes, don't look at him, turn around. And I was like, what, like he's a Medusa? And I put my hand over my eyes. The referee physically grabs me and turns me around. I was like, yo, dude, are we fighting from behind right now? What is happening? So... For those of you who are wondering what's happening, in point scoring karate, if you hurt your opponent or they like fall down, in this rule set you're supposed to know, oh they fell down, and immediately turn around and like kneel and look away so that your opponent has space and time to regain their composure with dignity, okay? But what I did, was kick my man in the stomach pretty hard, okay? And then he laid on the ground writhing, and I just looked at him like, what now, Dad? And the ref was like, turn around, and I put my hand over my eyes, like his pants had popped off. Now, it is fair to say at this point, they know I'm not a black belt, okay? <laughs> so, the ref turns me back around, and to Dan's credit, he's up and he wants to keep fighting. Dan is about that action, okay? Now this is the worst thing that can happen to me. Because don't forget, nothing has broke my illusion that Dan is the best guy. I just think my strategy worked and I got him. But I didn't stop him. He wants to keep fighting, and now he's angry. I have awoken the dragon that lives inside Sensei Dan. He's gonna super move me, and I'm gonna die. Right? He's gonna Hadouken me or something. He's gonna quarter circle forward B, and it's over. So, I'm standing there. And the guy's like, are you ready to fight? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, Dan, are you ready to fight? Dan's like, yeah. And then he says, fight. Before his hand is even down, I'm jumping the gun again. I'm jumping away from Dan as far as I can to the edge of the circle. I can't be on the attack twice. That's not how that works. I'm on the defense. I jump away from Dan like the minute I can. Dan, I think, wanted revenge because he tried to kick me doing some karate kid jumping thing. But because I was already jumping away from him, his jumping kick whiffs completely. And then he falls forward towards me, foot forward, head down, because don't forget, big on top, small on bottom. All right. So now he's down, bent down, head towards me, arms back like he's Naruto running, okay? Now, in point scoring karate, you are not allowed to punch someone in the head. So, arms back, head towards me, that's fine. But I don't know that. I see Dan's head lined up like a t-ball. And I do what any of you would have done! And I was just 
was like, United States of America. And I punched him in the head as hard as I could. Dan's glasses explode off of his body. And he goes to sleep. He goes the whole way. I have knocked him out. I have starched Sensei Dan. All right, he is fully out. I didn't even knock him out regular style. He got knocked out Looney Tunes style, okay? Do you know when someone gets knocked out so hard they go rigid first, like, I'm a tree, and then they go to sleep, like. He was down like this, and then he went straight up like a board, Wile E. Coyote, and then he went down. I distinctly remember looking at him on the ground being like, hmm, I killed Sensei Dan. Interesting. So some lady yells right away. She's like, get away from him. Some guy's like, Dan, are you okay? And I'm just standing there like, did I win or what? <laughs> I don't know the rules. So you would think hundreds of people in this gym, right? That I just knocked Dan out. A lady is yelling at me. Every eye in this gym should be on me and Dan. But not one person is looking at us. No one in this gym is looking at us. Every eye, hundreds of people, is looking directly at the bleachers. Where I realize I left my gang member friends. <laughs> who just watched me win a fight by knockout. And they are losing their minds. <laughs> Dude, just full grown men with face tattoos surrounded by moms screaming like they're powering up in Dragon Ball Z. Just, ah! Losing it, dude. One of my friends is grabbing a child by his shirt, like, you see this? <laughs> Someone jumped over the bleachers, walked onto the wrestling mats wearing his boots, took his shirt off, and was like, who else wants to smoke? <laughs> People were like, it's not a group thing. He was like, it could be, though. So just one of my friends in a random mom's face, WWE style, like, Bleh! like. Bro, she's not a part of this. What are you doing? So, I was banned from karate forever. And I was just like, tough but fair. Right? That makes sense. So I had, I had to go gather up my friends, and they're just, I was like, I'm banned. And they were like, is that our fault? Team effort. That was all of us. This was an us thing, not a me thing. <laughs> All right. And uh, honestly, can I be real with you guys? I think being banned from karate is cooler than having a black belt. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. You are correct to cheer.